Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we are going to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems from the sixth edition, the new edition, the sixth edition of the study manual. We have already solved all the math problems from the fifth edition. If you are interested in getting some more practice, if you are interested in practicing more, some more problem, you will find the solutions to every single math problem in this book from day number 1 through 80. The study manual, 5th edition from day 1 through 180, day 1 through 80. Today is our day number 104. We begin a new series on 6th edition from day number 101. If you do not own this manual already, the 6th edition that is, purchase one immediately. You are going to need it. Let's turn to page number 100, page, page number 66. We are on page number 66. We are learning how to convert from decimals to fractions. We did a couple of problems. We did a couple of problems on this concept from decimals and fractions yesterday. The two problems that appear in the, in the book. Today we're going to do a few more for some extra practice. And as I said, they are, if you want more practice, you can always watch the videos from day one through eighty. And these particular concepts that we're dealing with, which is how to convert from decimal to fraction to percentage and percentage to decimal fraction back and forth, those concepts were covered on day number 16, 17, and 18. Just type in T's, math, day 16, or 17, or 18, video will pop right up. And if you ever have trouble finding a one particular video, just type in my name first. If, you cannot, if it doesn't pop up, just type in Kishwani, T's, day 16, and you will see it right away. So how to convert decimals to fractions? For example, if we are given something like this, 0 0.025, and we are being asked to convert this decimal into a fraction, how do we go about it? These problems that we are, that we are about to do, there are four problems we will do in this video. These are not in the book, so don't, don't try to look for them. They are not in the book, they are bonus problems. Well, if you want to convert some decimal into a fraction, the first thing you need to do is understand and understand how to go about converting that quantity which is presented to us in a decimal form into a whole number. How do we present, how do we go from 0.025 to 25? What do, I, what do we have to do to this quantity to make it 25? Well, let's take a look at it. If you have 0 0.025, well, if you were to multiply it by 10, if you had multiplied by 10, 0 0.025, in that case, we would have picked up our, division, uh, our decimal and we would have moved to one spot. Well, let's multiply it by 100 then. That's not enough. We want 25. That would have moved it. It would have become 2.5. Well, that's not enough. Let's multiply it by 1,000. 1,000 because 1,000 has three zeros and we have three decimal space here. Three, three decimal places. Zero, two, five. We have three of them. One, two, three. Let's multiply it by 1,000. The decimal will end up after the five. Decimal will end up five. In other words, in other words, 0 0.025 times 1,000 is indeed 25. But the problem is, we cannot simply go around willy-nilly multiplying the given quantity by by 1,000. But if we were to do that, we would have changed this value. We cannot change the value of the quantity that is given to us. So how do we undo what we have just done? We have just we have just multiply the given quantity, quantity by a thousand, by doing that we change its value. We, we are not allowed to do that. We have to undo it. The way we undo is, well, the way we undo is that if we are going to multiply the top quantity by a thousand, we must multiply the bottom quantity by one thousand. The problem is I don't see anything in the bottom here. Do you? Oh, but we, oh, 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 but we do. It is 0 0.025 can be written as 0 0.025 over 1. It is still 0 0.025 over 1. It is still the same quantity. Now we can see that 1 times 1000 is 1000. And we already saw that 0 0.025 times 1000 is 25. Is that the end of it? Have we converted our decimal into a fraction? The answer is yes. We have converted the given decimal into a fraction, fraction being 25 over 1000. Are we done? To that, the answer is no, we are not done. The rule, the convention dictates, the tradition dictates that if a fraction is, is, is there, if, if the fraction is given, that fraction must be presented in its most refined form. The most refined form is when the fraction is presented in its 
reduce form. We must reduce the fraction as much as we can. We cannot tell somebody, we cannot go to somebody and tell them that the price of the price of the we cannot tell them that the price of the banana is 100 over 100 over 25. That's silly. Don't tell me price of the banana is 100 over 25. Reduce it as much as you can. Divide the top and bottom by 25 and then tell me that the price is four dollars. Don't tell me that the price of banana is one hundred dollars over twenty-five. That's very annoying. It must be reduced. We must reduce the fraction as much as you can. The same thing you have to do it here. So we have twenty-five, twenty-five over one thousand. But we're not going to write our thousand as a thousand. It'll be easier for us. It will make our life easier if we were to write our thousand as one hundred times ten. Do you agree that one hundred times ten is still a thousand? Oh, it's still a thousand. But now, as you can see, it's much easier to divide 100 by 25 than it is to try to divide 25 than it is to divide the entire thousand by 25. So leave the 10 alone. Let's divide top and bottom by 25 because we know 100 is made for four 25s. So let's divide top and bottom by 25. 25 is going to become one. 100 becomes four. And now, on the top we have one, and on the bottom we have what do we have in the bottom? On the bottom we have. 4 times 10, which is 40. Voila! In other words, 1 over 40, 1 over 40 is same as 0 0.025. We were asked, we were asked to convert this decimal 0 0.025 into fraction, and we have done so. When presented in fraction in its most reduced form, 0 0.025 equals 1 40th. Let's do the next one, shall we? This time you do it yourself. Let's do the next one, shall we? We need the room. Let's convert 0.35 into fraction. 0.35 into a fraction. Okay, we're going to pick up speed now. We want to convert, we want 35, 0.3, 0.35 into a whole number. Well, we can easily convert it into a whole number if you multiply it by 100. If you multiply 0.35 by 100, we're going to move the decimal, we're going to pick it up, move it to spot 1 and 2, and it will become 35. It will become 35. But we cannot simply, we cannot simply, I need to replace this part here, so I have room here, because I didn't want to do it here. That is what is given to us. We're going to multiply it by 100. Let's see what happens. 0.35, when you multiply it by 100, we pick up a decimal, and move it two spots to the right, 1 and 2. The decimal ends up here. In other words, point, point 0.35 times 100 is 35. But we cannot simply go around multiplying point 0.35 by 100 just because we wanted a whole number. We have to undo what we have just done. We cannot change the value of the quantity that is given to us. So since we multiplied this top number by 100, we must multiply the bottom number by 100. The problem is I don't see anything in the bottom. Do you see anything in the bottom? Oh yes we do. On the bottom we have 1. So let's, in other words we're going to multiply in other, in other words we're going to multiply the given decimal 0 0.35 by 100 over 100. That we can do. Why? Because 100 over 100 is just 1. We're not changing any value. Multiplying some quantity by 1 does not change its value. It's just that the 1 here is incognito, is in disguise, but it is 1. 100 over 100 is 1. So 0 0.35 times 100 is 35. 1 times 100 is 100. Can we leave it like this? The answer is no. We must reduce it. 35 and 100 share a common factor of 5. 7 5s are 35. And how many 5s are a 10? How many 5s are other? How many 5s? I, I do know how many 5s are a 10. That, that I do know. But if you ask me how many fives in a hundred, how the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? But how many five does one have? One has no five. One has no five. That one goes and joins the zero, becomes a ten. Ten I know has two fives. And then how many five does zero have? Zero has no fives. Zero has no fives. There you go. Seven over twenty. In other words, in other words, a hundred divided by five is twenty. In other words, 100 divided by 5 is 20. That's probably why, that's probably why one needs, one needs 20 nickels to make a dollar. 
a dollar is made up of 20 nickels because each nickel is 5 cents. 5 times 20 is 100. So 100 divided by 5 will give you 20. 7 over 20, we cannot reduce it anymore, so that is our final answer. In other words, if, if somebody asks us to convert 0.35 into fraction, 0.35 when converted into fraction equals 7 over 20. We cannot say 35 over 100. 35 over 100 is not wrong, but it is not how one presents the answer. The answer must be presented in its most, re in mo in its most reduced form. The fraction must be reduced as much as possible, every time. Let's do one more, shall we? You do the next one here. This time we have 0.45. As you can see, nothing is going to change. If you have 0.45, oh sorry, not 0.45, it's a different one. It's not 0.45. You do it yourself, shall we? It is 0.045. Well, 0.045 has three decimal places. It has three decimal places. We're going to have to multiply it by a thousand. Multiply it by a thousand. When you multiply 0 0.045 by a thousand, we pick up our decimal and move it three places to the right. One, two, three. Voila, it ends up here. In other words, in other words, 0 0.045 times a thousand equals 45. Equals 45. But we cannot just multiply the top number by a thousand. If we're going to multiply top number by a thousand, we must multiply the bottom, the denominator by a thousand as well. If we're going to multiply the numerator of a given fraction by a given quantity, then you must multiply the denominator by the exact same quantity to do to undo what you have just done on the top. Do you understand? So let's multiply the bottom number by one thousand as well. On the bottom we have one. We can multiply that as 1,000 by as well. And we know, we just found out, we just showed here, that 0 0.045 times 1,000 is 45. And 1 times 1,000 is just 1,000. But we're going to write our 1,000 as 100 times 10. Why, 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 why do we want to write our 1,000 as 100 times 10? Because it's easier to re reduce. It's much easier to deal with a 10, 100 or a 10 instead of having to deal with 1,000 together. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, shall we? 45 is made up of 9 5, 9 5 is a 45, and 10 is made up of 2 5s. Well, we're done. That's it, we're done. So on the top, we end up with 9, and on the bottom, we end up with, on the bottom, we end up with 2, 2 times 100. Or well, 2 times 100 is 200. That's our answer. In other words, if we are asked to convert, in other words, if we are asked to convert, 0 0.045 into fraction, the answer would be 9 over 200. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. This time we are being asked to convert 7, 7, 7, 8, 5. 7, 8, 5 into fraction. Okay. It's very simple. 7, 8, 5 has, 0 0.785 has three decimal places. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 1,000. We're going to multiply. On the bottom, we're going to introduce a 1 here. We're going to multiply our top and bottom by 1,000. And as we do that, 0.785 becomes 785. Becomes 785. And on the bottom, we have 1,000. We're going to write our 1,000 as 10 times 100. 10 times 100 is still 1,000. That's what that is. Except this is easier to manage. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 7 have? 7 has 1 5. 7 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 is going to go and join that 8 becomes 28. Stay with me this story. Stay with me this stay with me in this story. It's very important. Concentrate, okay? Let's start again. How many 5 does 7 have? 7 has 1 5 only. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 8, becomes 28. How many 5's does 28 have? 28 has 5 5's. 5 5's are 25. 5 5's are 25. 28 has 5 5's. After we take away 25 from the 28, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 7 5's. 
Since we have divided top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5. If we divide the 10 by 5, it becomes a 2. So the final answer is 157 times 2 times 100, which is 200. 157 times oh, 157 over 200. What we're going to do here now, what we're going to do here now, is to see how we divided 785. How we divided 785. The grown-up method. We're going to learn how to do the grown-up method by doing the babyish method now. Okay? How many five does seven have? Let's start again. Let's let's start again so we can see it. 785, you're going to divide it by 5. Okay, are you ready? How many 5 does 7 have? 7 has 1 5. How many? We're going to divide it by 5, obviously. 785 divided by 5. How many 5 does 7 have? 7 has 1 5. 1 5 is a 5. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. That 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. How many 5 does 28 have? 28 has 5 5. 5 5 is a 25. 28 has 5 5s. Five. 5 5 is a 25. After we take away 25 from the 28, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 7 5. 35 has 7. 7 5 is a 35. And that's where the story ends. So the final answer is 0.785 when expressed as, as a fraction is 157 over 200. 157 over 200. Let's write it right here. 785 when expressed as a fraction equals 157 over 2 times 100 which is 200. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.